Yes, sir. Okay. We will uh, go ahead and get started uh, now with uh, Coach Josh Pastner in our postseason Georgia Tech men's basketball media availability. Coach, if you could uh, start off with uh, some remarks before we take questions. Yeah, just a, um, an incredible year. Uh, so proud of our young men. Uh, so proud of, you know, so happy for Georgia Tech. You know, I've said it many times, you know, thank God for, for the bosses that I work for and have stood by us and just, um, you know, and I'm just so proud of our guys. We've accomplished a, a lot, eight straight ACC wins um, and uh, uh, eight, straight, eight straight ACC wins, won the ACC tournament, got the double bye. You look over the last two years, the success we've had in the ACC in this league, the premier league in the country, um, just on the fact alone, the ACC player of the year, the defensive player of the year, tournament MVP, besides Duke, us and Duke had the two most in the last two years, the most player of the week's awards in the ACC. I mean, when was, you know, we're, you know, you hear Georgia Tech's name in the same lineage as, as Duke and, and, um, and, and everything else as well, too. So, um, you know, if at that level with the amount of blue bloods in this, in this league. So it's really, really awesome for Georgia Tech. Um, and like I said, the, the success that we've had over the last two years in this league is pretty darn special. And um, um, <clears throat> sorry, my thing's beeping. But, uh, um, but anyways, you know, a lot to look forward to. I've been meeting with our guys this week. Um, uh, Bubba Parham uh, is, is going to come back for, for – he told me he's coming back. Um, uh, regarding the, uh, the other guys, you know, I'll finish with all my meetings this week. Um, Jose Alvarado, um, Jordan Usher, Michael uh, uh, Moses Wright, the three seniors, and you just heard from Michael DeVoe, they're probably going to wait to, they want to get information from the undergraduate advisory committee. And um, so uh, uh, we'll wait to hear on that. That takes about two to three weeks. We've, we sent all the stuff in and then it'll be about a two to three week process. And then from there, they'll have the opportunity to decide, you know, do they want to come back or do they want to try to stay in their professional careers? Um, they have not made the draft date yet and or the deadline to withdraw. Um, they can sign with an agent that's NCAA certified and they can have that agent get them set up for workouts or they can have me do it or somebody else do it for them and the expenses can be paid. The agent, to keep their eligibility, they can't get, you know, they can't get a car, they can't get any free money, they can't get any paid to go to Vegas or California to work out. They've got to follow still within the rules, but this gives them a little uh, um, opportunities. Uh, and then you've got the NIL coming down the pipe uh, in, um, you know, in August, most likely. So um, that's where we're at. And, and so we'll, we'll start workouts on Monday for, for the returning guys who, the younger guys who maybe didn't get as much time. We'll, get, we'll start workouts on Monday, keep getting after it. We're recruiting in the, in the transfer portal. Uh, we have three good kids we signed that are coming in, so uh, a lot to look forward to going into next season. We'll take questions for Coach Passer. If you have a question, please use the raise hand function within Zoom. We'll call on people individually, beginning with Charles Odom from the Associated Press. Uh, as you know, we just spoke with Michael, so we'll ask you about him. Um, how did uh, how did he progress this year um, uh, in, in terms of, of you know honing his point guard skills? Yeah, no, Michael DeVoe, I thought the last month or so of the season, he was as good as anyone in the conference, as playing as well as any guard in the country. I mean, the way he was shooting the ball, he just got better and better and better. I mean, I, 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 and I think that really bodes well for him going, if he decides to come back and or if he stays in the draft, um, he's had a lot of, um, you know, momentum. I just think he's really turned the corner. That's part of college, the maturation process, getting better. That's, I think that's what we do well here is we get guys better and, that last month or so of the season, he was as good as anyone in this league and or around the country in terms of a guard spot. And uh, um, um, <clears throat> they're just, you know, I'm getting beat because everyone's trying to get signed up for this COVID vaccinations. Um, so uh, anyway, uh, for our guys, but anyway, uh, cause Georgia Tech has allowed students and staff to get vaccinated. But anyway, um, 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 and everyone, the good news, everyone's saying, I want one, you know, they want to get signed up. So that's a good thing. Um, but uh, 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 so he, he, it bodes well for him. 
And, um, um, and if he comes back, I think he's got a chance to have an incredible senior season. And technically, he's a junior season because he would still be a junior next year based on the COVID rule but but you know we would all assume that next year would be his last year regardless but uh um and give him a senior day next year knowing that that would be it for him but um um so he he's a really good player and I want to do whatever's best for him whatever's best for him I support let's we'll get the information back from the NBA and then decide on what direction uh does he feel come back another year and he's and he's got a real measured head on his shoulders just you know he he's not gonna he's not gonna make any rash or rush decision he's gonna make a very informed uh, decision before he makes any decision. Next question uh, comes from Kelly Quinlan from Rivals. Obviously, you guys had a great season, Josh, but I mean, you had no off season at all. Um, no summer workouts, none of that normal stuff. Kind of what is that going to look like this year? Is it going to be different than a normal off season? And then how, you know, I guess, how much of a leap do you think you can take by having the normal offseason and be able to practice and do the five on fives and individual work and stuff that you just didn't get in at all last year? Yeah, Kelly, I, you know, obviously still to be determined on a few things because our guys are going to get vaccinated. I, I, you know, does that automatically eliminate having to do the not, you know, the, the, the non-contact stuff in the offseason? of testing and everything else, are you, are you uh, excluded from that? I don't know on that yet. Doc, our doctor is going to have to tell us on that. Um, I would hope so. That's part of the positives of getting vaccinated. You know, you don't have to worry about the contact trace. And, and I, I'm not saying this. I'm saying I'm hoping this is the case. But obviously, it's going to be up to the medical department to tell us. But so we can have a normal offseason in a sense of, of being able to go whether it's five on five, but also like for the big guys like Saba and Rodney, they need to compete against each other. You know, like that, I think that really hurt their development, and it took Rodney later on because they couldn't – when you're a big guy, going one on o and getting against a cone is not good for you because that's not – doesn't translate. It's not reality. But we had no choice because of the COVID rules. So you had to go against contact. And now that we'll have an opportunity to go against contact body to body, um, I just think they'll be better. So, you know, the, 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 the next phase, I guess the next question is going to come down. If you're vaccinated, do you – are you done dealing with, you know, the guidelines of, you know, of getting of, of a quarantine period, of getting shut down, of all those type of things? Um, because look, I, I can tell you that it was, it was, it's no fun being in quarantine and being there. And for, I mean, I think, you know, for Moses, I mean, how many times he was calling me saying, Coach, this is terrible, you know, sitting there in a, in a room for 10 days. Moses, 6'9", 250 pounds. You know, I mean, I, even for two days when we were at the NCAA tournament, it was driving me crazy. And I was just for two days and um, I had a corner suite because I was the head coach, you know. And so, um, I mean, I can't even imagine. So I'm hoping the vaccinations will allow us to, to, to maybe, you know, move forward from that. But I don't know. That's not going to be obviously that's going to be up to Dr. Galante to decide that. But if assuming that happens, Kelly, I think that bodes well for us, as it does for everybody around the country that we can do contact that should get us guys better to keep improving and, and, and have a really good, you know, spring and summer. Like I said, we're starting spring workouts, March 29th, that will go to April 21st. And, um, and, uh, uh, and then we'll have a couple weeks off and then we'll resume right again for summer. Next question comes from David Teal from yeah. I'm turning my notifications off. Josh, you mentioned recruiting the transfer portal. At last check, there were almost 850 Division I basketball players in there. Do you think the pandemic has fueled some of that simply because players didn't have a campus experience? Maybe that added to some of their impatience. David, I personally, I don't, whether pandemic or not, once they change the rule of you don't have to sit, I just think this is going to be the norm. Um, and then the rule within the ACC and every conference is going to do, you just can transfer within conference without having to sit out. So I just think I, I wouldn't be surprised when it's all said and done, you get to 1,500 to 2,000 names when it's all said and done. Um, and I just think that's going to be the norm. Now, I think for Georgia Tech, I think, for us to be successful, David, I think we have to have a mix of transfer kids from the portal, but also we've got to sign some high school kids too. I think we're, we're a program that has to get both. We're not going to be able just to live on the portal. That's not going to be 
uh, for how I, how I believe and what my philosophy is, I don't think that's, that's the best way to do it. We're going to have to get a mix, you know, and then continue to develop. Um, but I don't think there's any short, there's, I, I just think this, what it is right now is how it's going to be. And it's just going to be, it's just going to be that way for the remainder of the deal, whether there's a pandemic or not. I just think people want, you know, and I think part of the thing also is you allow the seniors back that, you know, for this one year that causes some different parts too, for people. So that's, that's another, that's another part of it. Are the rule changes good? I believe, I, look, I've always been for what's best for the student athlete. Um, I, I think that's important. I also, I do, you know, having them transfer, I think that's had the freedom of movement. I, I, I'm not as, I'm not for within conference. That's the one area I'm not for within conference. I think that's, you know, that's a little bit, but I also understand it. Just we're, we're in 2021. And if you aren't caught up with it, then you might as well, just, you're going to be left behind. So you just got to accept it, deal with it. You got to be able to be flexible and adjust. And if we've learned anything through the global pandemic within our sport, you know, trying to keep things within routine and, you know, you, you're going to, it's not, you got to be able to change on the fly at times. You're going to have to just be willing to adjust. And, and if you're not willing to do that, it's, it's probably not going to work. And so um, easier said than done, but you know, those are the things. And so I, I'm usually, I'm usually on the, on the front of what is best for the student athlete. That's, that's what's best for, for the game. Next question comes from Rod McKenzie from 247 Sports. Hey, Josh, you talked about beginning, you know, the summer workouts. You have uh, two young players who didn't get a chance to, to really play this year in Maxwell and Mecca. What is their status and how important will it be for them to be able to take part in those workouts? I think Jordan Mecca would have helped us win games this year if he was able to play. He was really good in practice. He was our best shot blocker, one of our, our best rebounder. He was really good, and unfortunately, he had the back issue. So um, that will just be determined on him getting healthy. And obviously, with a back, you're not going to rush anything. But hopefully, by the end of April to some point in May, he's able to be cleared full go. Um, uh, but based on how he played before his injury, he was – I thought he would help us win games this year. So I'm excited about him. Tristan Maxwell, his jersey's retired. Player of the year in the state of North Carolina, uh, over 2,000 points scored. I know the player that recruited how good he is, and um, you know I, I believe in his ability. Um, uh, I just think there's a big, sometimes there's a big uh, transition period going from high school to college, and fully understanding that. Hopefully, this year he understands the transition from high school to college, how important to change the the pace that he's got must move at. If he does get to that pace, that that I know he can, man, he's a, I saw him in high school. He's really, really good. I'm telling you, he's real. I mean, you don't get your Jersey retired in that state with all the guys who go to Carolina, Duke, NC state, he's the player of the year and he scores over. I mean, he's really good, but I think there's been a transition period from high school to college for him. And, and plus he's gotten injured. He had a foot injury. So I'm hoping this off season, he understands, okay, I've got to change my pace. And if he buys into changing his pace, he can get back to that level of player that I know who, how good he is. And, um, and because he was very talented coming out of high school. Um, and that's, I've always said this, the biggest jump people make is between their freshman and sophomore years because they, then they know what they need to do. And I think that will be the same with Tristan. Next question comes from Jeff Schultz from The Athletic. Yeah, Josh, sorry if you mentioned this earlier. I know the NBA hasn't set the deadline, draft eligibility deadline yet, but have the play seniors told you when they will tell you uh, of their decision? Are they going to be the end? Yeah, I think um, they want to get their feedback, from, which is going to be the next two to three weeks from the undergraduate advisory committee. Um, and then um, I, I can see them regardless of probably want to get the experience maybe of getting some workouts in the NBA because it's a – you know, they can get it for free and there's no weight off anyone's back on that. They don't have to pay for it. Um, I also think that they'll probably want to see what each other is going to do. Um, you know, they're a very close knit group. Uh, I think they all talk to each other a bunch. Um, you know, they're all, when I, when, when Bubba decided he's coming back, they're all like pumped and excited about that. I mean, each guy is going to make their own decision. And, uh, but, but knowing that Bubba's back, you know, I think guys will, will make, you know, their decisions with, you know, seeing what can they come back together. But I also know they're going to look at the feedback for them individually and see 
where they go. And probably a lot of their questions, Jeff, are going to be, can they improve their stock, whether that's domestically or internationally, um, by coming back. The one thing that they have to look at internationally is the global pandemic. Uh, you know, obviously economies have, have been just torn apart, which includes, you know, overseas teams, basketball teams, and, and, um, and there might not be as many opportunities or the money might not be the same right now and at certain spots. Obviously, you know, projecting a year from now, things should get back to normal and everything. And that's the, the hope, the plan, obviously, around the world. But um, plus the fans playing next year. But I've told the guys, this is their decision. I'm not going to convince them. I will give them honest feedback. But if they want to come back, they're going to come back knowing that I want to hold them the same standards. I'm going to coach them hard, you know, going to hold them the same accountability, both academically and athletically, and, and then go from there. And they all understand that. So I think the time frame is probably could be another month or so. Maybe it could even go into two months. I'm hoping at some point here the NBA sets the deadline because that's, that's the holdup. Is well, they got to give us some deadlines. Yeah, sorry. Yes. I was going to say with this potentially going several weeks, I mean, 60 weeks. Recruiting or looking into the transfer portal to try to get replaced. You're darn right, Jeff. It handcuffs us big time. And, um, uh, and I say that because, you know, I mean, a kid that's leaving is pro that's not, they're not coming here to, to, if they're a really good player to want to sit. And if the seniors come back, you know, they might say, well, where's my time, coach? Unless, you know, they understand, hey, I'm here for the long haul, you know, and, and this and that. I, I understand the situation. I truly believe how you recruit them is how you can coach them. So any of the kid that we're recruiting in the portal, I'm not going to tell them. I'm going to be honest with them. As I always am, I'm just going to say, hey, look, you can come here. But if in July 1st, Jose Alvarado tells me he wants to come back, Jose Alvar I'm bringing Jose Alvarado back. If, if Moses Wright wants to say, you know, same thing with Jordan Usher. We know Bubba's back. You know, if Michael DeVoe is in the, you know, test in the water, he wants to come back. So I will be up front with him on that. And I think that could scare some kids off, obviously, and nothing I can do on that. Um, but you're right, Jeff. There's no question that it will handcuff us. Um, it could either be in a good way or a bad way. So only time will tell on that. And, um, um, but I've already been asked those questions every time I've called a kid in the portal. We talked. I mean, we're on some good kids in the portal. First thing they ask me, Coach, are those guys coming back? And I, that's the first thing they went. And they've told me, man, I would love, because of our success, every kid's told me, man, I, Coach, I, I want to come to, with you. I, I think I love your style, love how you are, da, 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 da. But, Coach, if they're coming back, there's no room for me. And I tell them, you're right, there probably isn't room for you because those other guys are going to play, you know, major minutes, obviously. So that is a problem. But I guess it's a good problem if they come back. And, and I don't think kids are going to wait for two months to make decisions on the, in the portal. So we're just going to have to deal with the consequences, good or bad, if, that, if it goes for a long time period. Thank you. Yep. Next question comes from Kelly Quinlan from Rivals. Hey, Josh. In terms of just kind of how you approach building this roster um, with the transfer portal and, and with the new kids you're bringing in, I guess kind of how much do you have to look to the future? You know, you have a guy like Debo coming in that's really talented. It might be a guy who can start right away. Like, how much do you kind of have to balance that versus I really like this kid who's available in the portal? Do I, you know, make a sacrifice there? Or uh, I imagine that's the trick for coaches now, right? Like trying to decide how to build for the future without well, sacrificing well, winning. Yeah, you're right. But the trick, th th this year is the most tricky of them all because of the seniors having the freedom to come back. That's what makes, you know, if next year, well, this, you know, if someone's a senior, they're gone, you know what I mean? Or like if Michael DeVoe comes back, I, I know like we can plan that he's not, he's not going to stay a fifth year. You know, he's, even though he could, he, he, we're planning that he's gone after next year. I mean, you can plan on that. The, the issue becomes the seniors for this one year, not an issue. It's just the reality of it. And that, that, that could change on the portal. So as I mentioned to Jeff, it's just, you could miss some, you could miss not be able to take guys because they're waiting. They're waiting to see what happens with the portal. Um, but I think in the future, Kelly, after this one season, and I'm sure there's teams out there that have seniors that they don't want them to come back you know, and, and they wanted to move on, but I'm, I want our seniors to come back, obviously, if it's best for them. But um, I just think it's roster management. I, I've said this before, being the head coach in college, you're now the head coach and general manager because it is a roster management because with the way that the, with being able to transfer within conference, without of conference, without sitting out, 
um, it's, it's a continuation all year long that I really think you're, you're not only a head coach, you're also the general manager. And uh, so roster management becomes important, especially where, you know, you have the, in the NBA, you have a salary cap, obviously in college, you have a scholarship limit. So you, you got to make the most of the, to the best of your ability to, to manage that. And then, um, you know, what's going to throw, I, I'm telling you, what's going to be interesting and it'll be really interesting. I, I'll be, to be able to really navigate through football because they'll be the first ones to affect it. Coach Collins uh, will be the NIL, you know, I mean, you know, certain, well, how will that deal with team chemistry? If two guys on the team get a certain thing, will that affect the rest of the team be upset? Does that make sense? And I, I you know, and, and obviously that will be secondary after because football will have to go through that first. So I'll be able to navigate. And obviously coach Collins is as good as anyone dealing with that. So it's going to be interesting watching how he handles that. You know, how if their quarterback, you know, gets something, but the running back doesn't? Does that affect team chemistry? All that stuff you have to now factor in um, as you move forward with the new regulations in the NIL, which is still very good for the student athlete, because I've always said what's best for the student athlete is, is best for the game. Uh, but you'll have to navigate that part of it as well. Next question from Allison Mastrangelo from WSB TV. Hey, you said Bubba's coming back, and I was just curious, can you share a little bit of his reasoning or, or that conversation about why he chose to come back already? Yeah, I've met with all the, um, I've met with all the seniors. Or I've met with everybody this week. I, I will have by tomorrow, everyone. Uh, I'll have met all the seniors by the end of today. Um, but, um, um, yeah, no, I talked to Bubba. Bubba just felt it was best for him to come back. I mean, you know, I mean, there's a lot of positives be, coming back. You're, you're at Georgia Tech. Bub was on track to graduate. You know, we can either space out his graduation to make it for next year, or he can graduate this spring, go for a master's, um, um, or go for a second, second bachelor's, which, you know, getting a master's from Georgia Tech, there's no downside. But he has those options, so he's working with the academic person on that. You know, Bubba has a – Bubba, um, you know, you're playing in the ACC. You're playing on national television. You, you're fed, we, you know, we, we, you, you're fed at the highest level that you could be fed at. You're, you're, you're really taken care of medically. And, and there's a lot of positives um, that, you know, you're, 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 we charter where we fly to play places, you know. You know, you go play in professional. And if you're not in the NBA, you're, a lot of those places you're bussing. You're, you know, you're, you, don't ha you don't have someone cooking you omelets in the morning on the game days. You know, those are pretty cool things. Let me tell you, I had a kid at Memphis. I, this is, and I, and I love this kid and I, God bless him. He's, and I won't say his name and he's such a good guy. And we'd go to the, you know, we'd be during, we'd be going and he'd be like, coach, you know, we'd eat at the hotel all the time during the season. And he'd come to me after the season. He says, coach, coach. I says, what's up Pierre? And, he, and I says, he says, coach, uh, he goes, I didn't understand. I, I'm, I'm, I'm mad. I go, what do you mean? He goes, man, I went to the hotel and tried to get order a glass of orange juice. And it was $3 and 50 cents and it wasn't free refills. Coach, when I was with you, man, we just got as many refills as we wanted. I didn't have to worry about it. And I always tell our guys that story because, he, you know, it changes once you, you, you really have good things when you're in college. You leave and you're on your own. And here's a guy who played for me. And I love him. His name was Pierre. And I love him. But he didn't realize, man, Coach, I just kept ordering six orange juices. And every, every refill was $3. Well, I go on my own to get there thinking I want to get a free refill. And it, they're saying, no, no, that's a, that costs you another three bucks. And he said, I can't forget that. And that's where I tell the story of guys that because, and I think that's something where Bubba says, man, I have it really good right here. Why, why leave that for another year? Um, I understand if there's an opportunity to make a lot of money right away and some people might, you know, but if you don't have that, there's a lot of positives being at school at, at, and especially at a place Michael, like You Georgia mentioned Tech. that you're hoping to, you know, get your players vaccinated. Do you have any timeline of when they're going to get vaccinated? And is that going to be a requirement for your guys this coming season? I, I don't think we can require it per the law. Um, just like the flu shot, we can't require it. Um, uh, unless Georgia Tech or the, the federal, you know, government mandates it or something like that. But, but um um, so what Georgia Tech has, and I think, and, I, and again, I'm, from what I understand from our medical team, we got an email that, that uh, the Governor Kemp has opened it up to everybody, I think 16 or 18 above. And so Georgia Tech was going to try to vaccinate as many students, faculty as they can here in the next you know, month or two. And, so, um, and, and uh, so we're on that list for everyone to be vaccinated. And so we're, we're signing guys up. And so all of our guys, I've been on this tech chain, have all wanted to get vaccinated. From my understanding, from talking to our 
medical group that uh, once you're vaccinated, it, we don't have to do what we did this year. Like we, we, can, we can let, I don't want to say let our guards down, but you don't have to have all the mitigating things in place. You still got to wear the mask and all that, but you maybe avoid the contact trace. You don't have to do as much testing. You can have contact. So you know, it's not letting your guard down, but it's, it's easing up maybe restrictions on what you could do without being vaccinated. So my understanding is the guys are all going to want to get, everyone's going to want to get vaccinated to avoid one for the best thing for public health, but then two to also know they don't have to, for what happened to Moses Wright, it won't happen to happen to anybody else, if that makes sense. We can avoid that moving forward, assuming that everything moves forward in the world. Question from Bryce Kuhn from 247 Sports. Coach, you talked a lot about not only being a coach, but a general manager, and a lot that goes into that is brand awareness, and you've talked about increasing that brand. How have you seen that grow this year, obviously with the ACC Tournament Championship and just from a national level? And you even kind of alluded to it when you're talking to transfers in the portal. They're saying, you know, we saw you guys on national TV, this kind of thing. How have you just seen that grow over this past season? Oh, well, look, I mean, the game on playing in the ACC Championship game at 830 on ESPN at prime time slot, no other games going on. Do you know what kind of intention that we got on that? I mean, the, I got over 1,400 text messages. I got more, more positives from that. The exposure of television. And you couldn't, there's nothing else we could have done. That was the greatest recruiting tool was right there, the exposure. I've had guys from, you know, different tournaments and, 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 and networks call me and say, hey, we want to get your team to play in this event and that event, you know, where, where maybe we weren't asked before. And so all those things change. And so to be able to have that. And then obviously with recruiting and, you know, as I, as, but as I mentioned to Jeff, I mean, it's the issue is, and it's a positive issue, is, is we, we could be involved with some really good transfers, but we could be missing out on the transfers because they're waiting to see what our, our seniors do. And, and, and so that's the gamble of that too, because, you know, some guys who are the, 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 the better level players are going to want to come in knowing they have, you know, they want to play playing time is everything. So they know if those guys come back, it's hard for them. It's just going to be hard. And uh, so, um, but that's part of the great thing of when you win and, and, and you're on that national television on that national stage, it's, it's positive for everybody. And branding, I think uh, a coach, Collins does as well as anybody in the country at branding. And so, you know, we've tried to, everyone try to follow his lead. And also how about coach Fortner? Let me just say this. I have said, and you can ask coach Fortner this because, you know, back in the, you know, when, when they had the, between coaches, I, I was coaching the girls team. I don't know if you guys knew that between, between coaches, I was helped. I was, they needed a coach during the time in the transition. I was actually coaching them, but and, and, and when they told Coach Fortner was a coach, I was like, man, the Olympic gold medalist coach is coaching here at Georgia. Like, I was like, forget the ladies. I was like, man, I'm excited. It's the Olympic gold medal coach is coaching here. But on t I told Coach Fortner all year long, and I know she's been there for two years now, so I, this was two years ago. But, but I had told her because I'd watched her team play. I just, I, you know, I enjoy, wa I went, I enjoy watching them play. I had told her, all, you're going to the Sweet 16. You're going to the Sweet 16. And, you know, there were some times during the year that she was, they had some, you know, a little ups. I said, Coach, I'm telling you, you guys are going to Sweet 16. When I, I, I told Coach, I says, Coach, she's like, now, okay, Coach, you're, she, and we, were, we were texting and she was, you know, she said, you called it, we're going to Sweet 16. I said, now, she said, can you call it that we're going to the Elite Eight? I said, I'm going to start now putting out the, the good vibes that you're going to the Elite Eight. So um, I am so happy for Coach Fortner. I'm so happy for their team, for their, for their ladies. What a great program, incredible coach, and to be in the sweet. And I always say this, if you get to the sweet 16, anything can happen. That's men's and women's. I mean, it's just, it's wide open. You get a lucky bounce here. You get a break here. You get a whistle here. It's no longer just about, I mean, you get, you get a little lucky here and there. You can go to the final four. So the key is getting to the sweet 16 opens up where, where you can just, anything can happen. I'm so happy and excited for, for Georgia Tech women's basketball and Coach Fortner. Okay, just time for one or two more. Uh, we've got one in queue from Kelly Quinlan. Josh, in terms of maintaining this now, you guys got back into the tournament. You, you, you did in the fifth year, as you know, we all talked about. What, what do you need to do now to maintain that to where it's a regular occurrence for Georgia Tech and it's not a, you know, once in 10 year thing, which is obviously not ideal. Kind of what are the steps that the program needs to take now to, to be a consistent tournament team uh, year in and year out? 
You know, it's amazing. I, um, you know, you, you know, you, you, you get to, you get to the, you, the, the overwhelming stress of five years of all what, as, as everybody here knows, what I, we all dealt with, I dealt with, the program dealt with, on and off the court, every for five, but get, to get to this point is just, and over the last two years of what we've done to win in the ACC, but then you get to the point, you're like, okay, what do we got to do next to continue to sustain? It's almost like, you know, you don't even, like you, 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 you get back and the next thing I'm thinking of is about, okay, what do we got to do for next year to make sure that we don't have any slippage? And I'm like, I said, hey, 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 like, remember what you believe in and, and, not, and, and, and not taking things for granted. So I've got to make, I, I try to keep it in perspective. That being said, Kelly, is, is we don't want to have any drop off. And, if, and, if, our, and if, if a bunch of our seniors come back, we're not going to have drop off. I can tell you that. If the seniors don't come back, if they all leave, um, not that we're going to drop off, but we're, we're going to be younger um, and, and we'll have to be different. Uh, we'll still be talented in some areas, but we'll be younger. That's for certain. So if the seniors come back, I think we'll be a, you know, if all the seniors come back, we can be preseason top five, top 10. If a couple come back, we can be preseason top 20. But I think the key is going to continue to sustain it. That doesn't mean every year you're going to be, you know, top four. I mean, there could be years where you're, you know, because of my philosophy of trying to get old and stay old and mixing with high school kids and transfer kids, because the league has 15 teams. I mean, look, the, the goal is to continue to stay competing for, getting into the NCAA tournament. That's what you want to do. Um, yes, you could have an off year. That can, that's, that's very normal. That could happen, especially if you lose guys and you're younger. That's just going to be a norm. That could happen in a normal process. We're not replacing older guys that leave with one and done freshmen. I don't foresee that happening. I, I, you know, not that I wouldn't want to recruit those guys, but I'm also a realist on it too. So I think the goal is to continue to sustain as high as we can knowing that there could be some, there, there could be a year or two where you're, where you're maybe not as good as the year before, but, but over the course of time, you want to stay where you're at doing the best you, that you can, you know, maybe a year you finish seventh, not fourth, maybe a year you'd finish ninth, but maybe the next year you're finishing second, you know, stuff like that. So you just, that's kind of how it is. And, but I'm very driven to do all I can to keep us where we're at. And, um, but a lot of that's, you know, if our seniors come back, We'll be, we, we will stay where we're at for next year. There's no denying that. If, if they all leave, then, well, and we know Bubba's back. So if a couple of them, if another one or two come back, I mean, we got a chance to, to continue to be really good again next year. I really believe that. Okay, Coach, uh, thanks so much for taking the time to do this today. Everybody on the call, thank you guys as well.